Welcome to the online church. We welcome all our friends in Jamaica, Uganda, Kenya, Europe, the United States, and we welcome you all around the world to the online church where we worship the living God in spirit and in truth. Welcome, Wes. Welcome, all. Um, so our message today is titled, uh, Worship Warrior and a Warning. So um, I want to, I don't see Ryan here yet. So, um, so a few years ago, a few years ago, I was in my laundry room and I was singing and worshiping the Lord along with the radio. And the radio announcer came on, and he was talking, and he said something about a worship warrior. And, and, I, and I said to myself, worship warrior? And I spoke the word out. And when I spoke the word worship warrior, the Holy Spirit started slamming my heart really hard. And so I was like, Holy Spirit, do you want me to be a worship warrior? And he was slamming my heart again. He's telling me, yes, yes. And I was like, okay, I'll be a worship warrior. I'm in. And then I was like, what is a worship warrior? I had no idea. And so then the Holy Spirit led me to two scripture passages. The first one he led me to was Acts 16, 16 through 34. And the second passage that he led me to was Second Chronicles uh, 21 through 24. And I'd like to read Acts. 1620. It's so powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. Um, this is Paul and Silas. And brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison uh, awakened out of his sleep. Seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your house. Wow, what a, what a powerful uh, passage of scripture that is. And that's the first scripture that the Holy Spirit had led me to. And then the second one is the scriptures um, that will be going over today, Second Chronicles uh, 20, 1 through 24. Let me get there. And I don't see uh, Jackie on. So I'll go ahead and read the scriptures. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and read the scriptures and um, go from there. Okay. Um, Second Chronicles 20, 1. What did I say? To 22. Um, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them others besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There come a great multitude against thee and beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazan Tamar, which is Engedi. 
And I don't know if anybody can see the, I, if you can see my screen, I have a map of Israel, and you can see where En Gedi is, and then you can see where Jerusalem is and where Judah is and just how close the enemy is to them. Um, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to, to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Are thou not our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people of Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built, a, built thee a sanctuary therein, for thy name, saying, If, when evil come upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon, and Moab, and Mount Seir, whom thou would not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come against us and thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, will thou not judge them? We have no might against this great company that comes against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. And then I'm going to skip down to verse 24. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That reminds me of the song again. Let God arise 
let his enemies be scattered. He has destroyed all our enemies. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and pray. I don't see Ryan on, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Um, loving Heavenly Father, we just bless you and praise you, Father God, that you are on your throne and you are in control. Father, we bless you and praise you that you are with us and you are for us. Thank you, Father, that you have destroyed every one of our enemies. And we give you the praise, Father God. And I ask and pray, Father God, as I bring forth this word that you've given, that your precious sons and daughters will be blessed, that they will be encouraged, that their faith built up, that they be um, edified and equipped. Father, thank you for this time and the privilege to be used by you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would be with me and put a guard over my mouth that I only speak that which you have for me to speak out, Lord, that only your word go forth. And I, and I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Um, and at this time, can you still hear me? Hopefully you can still hear me. Okay. Um, at this time, I would like anybody that's here in the chat room, if you would like to type in some people's names that you would like prayer for, um, and we'll pray over them for healing and um, those that are driving or cannot get to the chat room, go ahead and call those names out and, and God will see the names written and hear the names that are called out and we'll pray for them. I want to continue to pray for my sister Debbie for her complete healing. I pray for my niece Jolene and for her healing and Anthony and his healing, my nephew. And um, anybody that's in pain and suffering sickness and disease, I just lift up every one of them and pray for their healing as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up each of these names that were written and those that were called out to you. Father, we come boldly to your throne of grace in Jesus' name. Father, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all iniquity, we pray in Jesus' name. Father, we ask for healing for each person written in the chat and those called out before you. In Jesus' name. We bind every form of sickness and disease in the authority Jesus Christ has given unto us. I command healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we give you all the glory, the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. So, um, I want to go back over the verses in Second Chronicles uh, 20. 1 through 24, and just make some comments, some commentaries. And, um, but I also wanted to say to you before I began, before I begin is, um, I was not going to bring the message on, uh, today's message on Second Chronicles 21 through 24. That was not my decision. I was going to bring the message out on Acts. And the Lord's like, no, 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 no. You're going to do the message on Second Chronicles. I was like, okay. So that's why I chose Second Chronicles because the Lord chose it. And um, when I reread it, because I hadn't read it for a while, when I reread it, I understood why the Lord wanted me to read and bring out this passage, because there's a warning for 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 the people. There's a warning. And so at the end of the message, I'll share that warning with you all. So, um, so again, I want to go back over the passages. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jerusalem, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there came a great multitude against thee and beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon and Tamar, which is Engedi. 
And so we can clearly see this is war. Um, the, the, the enemy is gathering up against um, Judah and Jerusalem. And, and um, um, we can also liken that to our lives as um, all these like dangerous situations and problems um, that come suddenly into our lives. Um, in all danger, public or personal, our first response should be to seek help from the Lord. Um, and that will be my next one. Um, and Jehoshaphat feared and sat and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And all Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. So again, in all danger, public or personal, our first response should be to seek help from the Lord. Not to lean on our own understanding, but to go to the Lord. Come to Him humbly, trusting only in His mercy and power, and fasting. Um, this fast that was called was a universal fast, which extended even to the infants. Um, these were perilous circumstances. Uh, and then the prayer. Uh, I'm going to go verse nine. I'm going to go down to verse nine. Sorry, I got to look at my notes. Okay, and verse nine, and it, and when evil comes upon us as the sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then you will hear and help. And this affliction that's coming on them right now is is this multitude, this great multitude coming against them. But in our lives, it can be any calamity. Um, we are the temple of the living God. We enter into the Holy of Holies through prayer, into the presence of God, and we cry unto him, and he hears us, and he helps us. He, he will answer. Um, and then I want to go down to verse 14. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite, of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Oh, I skipped one. I want to go to verse 12. Let me go back up to verse 12. So sorry. Um, verse 12, our God, our God, will not thou judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you. Jehoshaphat makes an earnest appeal to the justice of God to protect those who, without provocation, were attacked and who were unable to defend themselves against overwhelming numbers. And then he said that, but our eyes are fixed on you. And that's so important to fix our eyes on Jesus and not the circumstances. If you remember Peter, Peter walked on water as he kept his eyes on Jesus. But when he took his eyes off Jesus and he looked at the circumstances around him, he seen the wind and the, the boisterous, the wind and the waves and the rain. Um, then he began to sunk. He sunk down into the water. So it's important that in these difficult times to keep our eyes on Jesus and know that he's going to get us through them. And now verse 14. I'll go back to verse 14. Um, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Um, the Spirit of Prophecy came on Jay, Jay, 
Jahaziel, I have a trouble time with that name, Jahaziel, in the midst of the congregation, um, he encouraged the people to trust in God. And so um, I want to make that same encouragement to you, my brothers and sisters. Christian shoulder, soldier, through Christ Jesus, you are more than a conqueror. And there's nothing impossible with God. We can, through God, we can do all things. Nothing's impossible. And then 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord your God. See the salvation of the Lord God with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, neither be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Set yourselves, stand ye, station yourself, take your stand. When we have these scary situations come upon us and our first thought is run, that's when we need to stand and set ourselves and, and, and know that God is with us. Um, and the Lord says, fear not, take your stand and see the salvation of the Lord was the command of Moses to Israel at the Red Sea just before great deliverance. So um, when we have these fearful situations come in our life and our first, well, maybe not our first, but some may want to run, that's when we, when we need to stand. When we make that stand and put our full trust in God and, and, and uh, wait on the Lord, he comes, he delivers, he gets us through that situation, and then that, that great deliverance comes. And then, you know, you're, you just feel stronger, you're built up in your faith, you know, you're going from faith to faith and glory to glory. So that's pretty powerful. And that's part of our um, armor is to stand. We are to stand. Um, and then... Seventeen, maybe seventeen. Yes. Okay, then I'm going to go down to verse nineteen. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. When they stood up. They showed their full assurance of the victory as if it were already accomplished. Right here and now, they, the enemies have gathered against them, and it's a massive army. And then the Spirit of the Lord came, came upon Jehazel, and he spoke the word, Don't fear, don't be dismayed, the Lord your God will fight for you and so they believed and and so they stood up in full assurance knowing that god was going to fight for them and um so they showed their full assurance of the victory as if it were already accomplished before the battle even began they were shouting the victory and i just love that and then in verse 20 and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of, the, of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe as prophets, and so shall you prosper. Um, and I wrote here, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that should lie. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. When God speaks, it's already done. And in verse 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness 
as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Their, um, their only weapon in their hand, they didn't have a weapon in their hand. They, their weapon was faith. They went out in faith, and they believed their God, and they believed the prophets. And, and they went out in absolute faith and, and was singing praises unto the Lord, uh, praising the beauty of holiness. And the hymn, giving thanks unto the Lord for his mercy, endures forever. That's all they had to do. The victory was theirs because God had already told them that they would not have to fight, that God would take care of this his way and in his time. And they believed him. And then in verse 22, I've got two new papers. Oh, in verse 22, um, when they began to sing, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. As, as we face these difficult situations in our lives, that's when we need to be standing up and being the um, worship warrior in full assurance and giving God glory and praise and honor for the victory that is already ours, even before we see it with our eyes. By faith, we praise and worship in full assurance, and, and God will deliver us. And so um, God went out and set ambushments against these people and every one of these people turned on themselves and killed each other just amazing it's pretty amazing and so that is the end of my message but I, I have a couple more things that I do want to say um, so what is a worship warrior a worship warrior is one that stands up to praise the Lord with a loud voice on high. They show their full assurance of the victory as if it were already accomplished before the battle even began. And I have a couple of scriptures that I want to share with you. Second Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be to God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And in Romans 8, 37, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we already have the victory through Christ. It's already done. So we can start shouting now. Praise God. And, and so I just wanted to do a quick summary. In perilous circumstances, when they come upon us, our first thing is to pray. Go seek the Lord and fast. Fasting is so important because when we fast, it humbles us before the Lord. And it also makes us more sensitive to the Spirit. We can hear better when we fast. Um, when evil comes, cry unto the Lord. In your affliction, he will hear and help. And uh, fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at the problem. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. We're not alone. He leads and guides us. Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. Set yourself. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord with you. Hold fast your position. Don't move. Don't run. Just stand there. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Stand before your enemies. Uh, stand up to praise the Lord God with a loud voice. Be a worship warrior. Believe in the Lord, so shall you be established. Believe its prophets, so shall you prosper. Stand in awe 
watch and see what the Lord will do. So that is my message today on a worship warrior. And we are all we are all called to be worship warriors. Every one of us are called to be a worship warrior. And um, praise God for the victory already before we even see the manifestation of it. And then um, I do have a word that the Lord gave, uh, a warning, and it's in verse 9. When evil comes upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. Oh, brothers and sisters, what a timely message this is. Um, we are in those days. And so um, the Lord wanted me to sound the warning. And so I want to read the watchman's warning in Ezekiel 33 and in Z, uh, number, uh, verse 3. If, when he sees the sword come, when the watchman sees the sword come upon the land, upon the land, and he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take away, take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and he took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So I am lifting my voice up as a trumpet, and I am Sounding the warning, the sword is coming. And now, as worship warriors, we know what to do. We don't, we don't have to fear, but I do need to give that warning. And um, also, I wanted to say in Ezekiel 3, um, the Lord says to warn the wicked and the righteous. And in verse 18, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou give not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his way, to save his life. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And so I, I warn the wicked, those that have not yet received Jesus Christ, call upon his name today. Turn today. Call upon his name. There's nothing you've done that he won't forgive. Come to Jesus today, and he will save you. And also there's a warning for the righteous. When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall not die in his sin. And his right, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous man sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. So I warn the wicked, come to Jesus Christ, come today. Repent, turn to Jesus Christ, and be saved. And to the righteous, if you're in sin, quickly come out of it. Come to Jesus, confess it, repent, and, and continue to follow him. And, and that is the warning that the sword is coming. And so I also wanted to share the gospel before I leave, I want to share the gospel because there may be some that hear the warning and and will repent but don't know how to call on the name of the Lord. So I want to share the gospel. What is the gospel? First Corinthians fifteen one through four tells us what the gospel is. Jesus Christ came the first time. 
He was crucified for our sins. He was buried, and he rose again the third day. And he is coming back one day soon and very soon. That's the good news. That's the gospel. And I wanted to share the ABCs of salvation. What are the ABCs of salvation? It is a childlike explanation of how we can be saved. Number one, or A, admit you're a sinner and you need the Savior. Repentance, you're changing your mind. You turn. You do a complete 180. Turning from your sins to the Savior for the forgiveness of your sins. Um, Romans 3.10 tells us, there's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 tells us, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that's the A. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. And then C, call upon the name of the Lord, and that's Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's, that's the worship warrior and a warning. What is a worship warrior? And what is the warning? The sword is coming. And, and what a timely message that the Lord brought forth. Now is the time to stand up and sing with a loud voice in full assurance of the victory, even before the battle's gun begun. We know war is coming. We know the enemy is gathering. Now's the time to sing and worship the Lord in full assurance that we've already got the victory. So I thank you for uh, coming today. And hearing the word of the Lord, I pray that you were blessed and, and, and equipped and that your faith has been built up and, and strengthened. And so I just want to end with a, a prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, Father God, that you have destroyed our enemies already. And Father, that you are calling each and every one of us to be worship warriors. Father, I ask that you would perfect your love in each and every one of your precious sons and daughters, that there would be no fear in any of us, but that we would rise up, Father God, and sing and praise and give glory unto you for the victory, even though we don't yet see it. We know it's ours because you won the victory already for us at Calvary's cross. And, Father, I just ask that you would strengthen us, that you would increase the strength in us, I ask that you would prepare us mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I ask that you would increase courage in us and, and, and just build that our faith would go from the, go, that would take us from faith to faith and glory to glory, that our faith would um, grow exceedingly in each and every one of us. And Lord, I just ask that you would bless your people that you would lead and guide, direct, and help them. I pray that their every need be supplied. Um, I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus all around the world. And, Father, I pray if there be any this day that are not saved that heard this message on what the gospel is and how to be saved, that they would call upon your name this day and be saved and that they would pass from death unto life, that they'd be delivered from the power of darkness and be translated into the kingdom of your dear son. Father, we just give you the praise and the glory and the honor for, for, for all that you've already done, what you are doing and what you will do. We love you, Father, and we bless you and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 
And that is the end of the message. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. God bless you each and every one.